Welcome to the round of 32. Did I turn it on? Oh, I hit I hit the on button and I think it's working. Okay, I think we're recording. That's what we should be doing. If this is going on YouTube, we should record and then it could go on the YouTube. Uh, we are playing Agro War. We're going second, which is not what it says to do in the manual. They are playing magic, probably control magic. Could be card draw magic, most likely control magic. This is pretty reasonable, so we're going to keep it. We can play Volka's Cap'n on one. Probably gets peeled, but Warmonger Smith busted up to two health anyways. Trial Spirit can couple well with a lot of different things. Ooh, Staff of Shards. Interesting. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open Warmonger Smith. The reason why is we open Volka's Cap'n. Staff of Shards plus GP rips this. Yeah, so we, we baited a bolt there. So what we're going to end up doing here is Volka's Captain Trial Spirit here. And this will set up the Thundercaller. And the reason why we like having the buff here is so that we can preserve this. They can actually do this and this as well. That's if they have like nothing in hand, but they're probably going to do something more productive, I would imagine. No, they're going with that line. So... Ooh, this is scary. Okay, that minion is definitely one I want to peel from the board and do not want to be present. So let's go ahead and do said peel. And I'm going to go face for the Frenzied here. This gives this Viking extra stats. They can still use this in GP here if they would like. They've already used one Star Shard Bolt, so they're less likely to have the second one. That's a foolish... Foolish mathematics right there. That's how you get burnt, kids. That's how you get burnt. <laughs> that, that, that's that's a, common, a common thing people have in poker, right? They say, oh, they, uh, they, they, they had it, they had the, they have, there's, there's two aces on the board. They can't have pocket aces. And then they turn over pocket aces and you, you look like an idiot. Um, wow, another one of those. Oof. Big decision this turn. I don't think I can let this live. So we're going to peel. Not really what I wanted to do this turn. Kind of slow. They could shape blast and then peel here and they're just doing great. Maybe I should have played white for a guard and gone face and ignored. The street conjurers are one of those things that you just leave out there and they kind of just wreck you though. The Staff of Shards has gotten a lot of value. A very unique addition by our opponent in this game, LC Hammer. Known for running some interesting stuff for sure. And seems to be... Get, got, got, got great value out of this. It's used all the charges before I could get to the Bronze Servant as well. We're in a, we're in a bind here. And by a bind, it's, it's just not looking good. They've got a Tracking Bolt here. They can peel it with the GP. And they've got to feel pretty good about where they sit in this game as of this point. Here, I'm just going to continue to add pressure here. Nothing in the Sanctum too appetizing. They might buy the form of power very shortly here. Demetrios, GP there makes sense. Final draft to get the ward off. Do they have a one mana spell alongside it? Yeah, they got the form of power, but from the sanctum, exactly. So knew that could definitely be an issue. And we're in a bind here. The foul is definitely the best card in the sanctum for our perspective. Uh, just got to go face with as much damage as possible by the vow of champions here. But we've only got them down to 19. This is not going the way we would like to go, and like starting next turn, they can start doing things like City Planner, so we've really got to hope they have a brick this turn to really have any shot of winning this game. Something like a Shape Blast is probably just a win for them at this point. It's a very, very difficult situation we have found ourselves in early in game number one. Well, this isn't even early. This is a uh, they've really countered us very well. This is a bit slow and a sign that they might not have the best stuff available at the moment. And hoping hoping we hoping they bricked on both the draws there so we can go face for a lot of damage. They don't really want to eat 10 and ooh, that tracking bolt was clutch. I don't know if they had that or not. 
they didn't, then that was a really, really big top deck. If they did, then they were uh, trolling us there a little bit. So yeah, I get the Thunder Caller out there. Not super excited about this turn. I'm expecting a City Planner. City Planner does ask some questions, though. With the flank on this minion, we are pushing some damage here. And they're going to go ahead, be alert, and say, hey, I don't like the flank on the Viking Longship. Interesting Staff of Shards again. Ooh, the yeah, Shape Blast is huge for them. That is a complete board wipe. Staff of Shards should help them fight for the board here. They get Next Sanctum pick. Uh, the Bronze Servant has to be very tempting for them. I will just toss out the Raid Reveler. I'm not committing yet on the Vow. I might want to go face with it. I might want to draw a card with it. So we're, we're uncommitted on that yet. So this is a Snow Statue that can't attack. This is a Snow Shaper Palace that is super, super annoying. We are looking for Blade of Sticks right now. That would be a very good card. Um, Vicious Ren's actually pretty good. I'm thinking of trying to, trying to generate some positive thoughts right now. Uh, this card doesn't really do much for us. Um, if we play it, it just gets eaten by the Snowshaper Palace, so there's no reason to play it. Just utilize the GP. Now, this game is tighter than it looks. It looks like that they have, they, they have gotten there. Uh, but remember, uh, we do have two Vicious Ren's in our deck. 17 cards... And <laughs> ask and you shall receive, fake muse. The Vicious Rend will get us there. We were saving the Vow of Champions. Unsure what we wanted to do with it, um, but we do get the burst. The reach there from Aggro Slayer War gets it done in game number one. Game number one went our way. We played Aggro War. It looked like the magic deck that... LC Hammer was playing stabilized, but we had enough reach to get there at the very end. Here he's queuing at us with death. I'm coming at him with classic um, Hidden Rush Deception here. This is a classic fake news media network deck here. Lady Marcella into this is just, eh, it's just awkward. The, the Nightly Trapper is very interesting in this matchup. If you're like a Skull Scepter type of deck, it can be very useful. And this is actually a Guild Deception deck, which is slightly, slightly off-brand. It's not pure Hidden Rush. I mean, in spirit, it's, it's very much Hidden Rush. But it's, it, it, it's, it's Guild Tribal Synergy. A lot of Guild Tribal Synergy within this list. So it'll be interesting to see how this goes. It looks like he is probably, if he's playing Brimstone, my guess would be he's playing Anubians, running that as kind of a cycle card. I could be wrong, though. We've always got to be careful with Armor Lurker in, in this matchup. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, the reason why we got to be careful is their GP can just peel it at all times. Uh, we do know that they have a Return to Cave. That's good information. And we do like the cat here. We, we like the cat here. I, I don't want to commit the Nightleaf Trapper uh, yet. So what we're going to do here, and I'm not in a rush to play Merrick. I'm just going to use the GP and go face here. They might GP us back, but that's fine. I don't want to I don't want to commit here with the Armor Lurker because if we attack, it just dies the God Power. But we do know that they have returned to Cave. And ooh, this is... This is an annoying minion, but we can remove it. And I think that we're just going to give up the Armor Lurker and use the GP. It's just a simple line. Um, it, it's the path of least pain, I would have to say. But speaking of pain, this cat with a knife, very likely to cause some pain to our opponent. And it's going to be... Well, I mean, it shouldn't be a complete shocker, but it's always a surprise when the aggro deception player plays Return to Cave against you. So this is a card that can be of use a little bit later for us. Okay, Assassin's Aim definitely has some merit and some certain lines that we could be going for here, like next turn, for instance, on the merit here. Uh, we could be running into a Bifurcating Curse, um, so we don't want to commit the Lady Marcella. 
Neferu? Yeah, okay. There, there, there were a lot of things at 6 that could be very mean. You could argue that playing Merrick there was unnecessary, and since he had the answer, I would tend to agree with you. Um, uh, it's, 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 it's easy after you know what happened, right? Uh, for sure. So what are the ideas here? He's probably going to kill this, and then some, some stuff is going to trade off. But Assassin's Aim onto the Whisper Baron is a high-quality target here, and definitely a long-term strategy for us. And it looks like that they will be able to you know, get some Anubian stuff in the void here. Yep, very annoying. Very annoying Anubian stuff they have going on here. Traditional, though. Adam and Holmes, pretty, pretty solid here. Uh, we are going to go with the original plan of Assassin's Aim on the Whisper Bear, and this minion does get bigger with every guild creature that comes into play. We're already pushing a, a fair bit of damage here. I don't want to buy from the Sanctum. I think more bad things happen than good. The question is, is, do I want to pip to GP a Skulker? And I think the Skulker is kind of getting in the way of some of their stuff. So we're just going to leave it there for now. And we, we, might, we might revisit this decision. We also have the Return to the Cave, but we know they have a Return to the Cave. In fact, they might be playing the Return to the Cave this turn if they're worried about my potential burst, which would be something I would be concerned about if I was from their, if I was sitting in their shoes. So they are indeed healing the, their god up, which is which is no surprise. And they do have the return to cave that we were kind of expecting. Stoneskin's actually a pretty good top deck here. And what I can do is I can I can just delay this here. Can Archer, Nightleaf, yeah. So I'm just getting guild minions in play here is what I'm doing. And I'm going to go ahead, remove this minion. Uh, this can go to the face for eight. And next turn with the potential with the Rune of Life and the Sanctum, we can add some more mileage to this, to this vehicle or this card. Um, they can do some Anubian things now with Priestess of Takat and the Void. We are at 11. I don't think that they can find lethal. That's usually the famous last words, though, of somebody who's about to lose to a surprise Anubian lethal. Okay, the Skull Scepter, but he played it when I have the Nightleaf on the board. Huge oversight by LC Hammer. That is a critically bad mistake. Wonder when he's gonna realize uh, exactly what he had done. Now I'm just count. I'm gonna count here to make sure I don't have lethal. Um, eight, nine, ten. Okay, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, we're not close, but we had we had to think about it there for just a just a second. So so what I want to do here is I want to ruin of life, the, whisper baron to give it a little bit more longevity. That's right. I, I played Assassin's Aim on it, so we we got it. We got it one. We got we get we gave it one more turn worth of runway, which you can debate on whether or not that was even worth it. Um, but yeah, I don't feel like I need to commit the cat here unless just return to cave. The the mana is not going to be very important for us, right? So let's just go ahead and return to cave. So the Whisper Baron is threatening lethal. I didn't play the cat because if he has Bifurcating Curse, it does kill the Whisper Baron and the cat. So I just thought that keeping this back for another potential wave afterwards was smart. Um, it may turn out not to be because he will survive this turn. He, he will have the exact amount he needs to survive unless I top like a guild creature and then I have lethal. No, wait, I don't. I need a knife or aim for lethal. Switch to duelist. We are one point off of lethal. So 
So here we're just going to go ahead, remove, and we can we can commit the cat here. If he has the Bifurcating Curse here, he really gets back at the end of this. Land of the Dead. But he can only kill one minion because I've only got one target. The rest are hidden. I think this is going to be the downfall of his, his game plan here. And we should be able to get the win and it advance to the round of 16 here. I don't see any, any method of survival here. He will gain two health. But this represents lethal on the board, and unfortunately for him, there's no way to attack into any of these hidden minions. I wonder if the return to the cave that I stole from him made a difference. Because would he have would he have had a different line that could have given him lethal if I didn't have the return to cave? And I don't I don't know. That's food for thought for the postmortem. Either way, we win. We're to the round of 16, and see you in the next video.